really is dripping with creativity and queer magic. So over some hot tea, we talked art, gender, and mental health with Shamir, who was quickly shaking up the music industry. Hey, hey child. Hey. How are you? I'm wonderful, how are you? I was just making some tea. Would you like some? Yes, please. All we have is calm chamomile, and I know that doesn't describe either both of us, but we're gonna work with what we got. Wonderful. Yes, yeah, spill it. Okay, I'm wait, spilling the tea. All right, so you so yeah, are originally born and raised in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and what brought you to Philly? Um, music, honestly. Just the music. I like the music scene here. I actually took a bus out here and just like fell in love the minute I stepped off. Like it was, it was just like, it felt like home. I've never felt tethered to like a physical place until I came to Philly. The Philly is home for me. I was born and raised here. I feel like I should have been born and raised here. I feel like I would have <laughs> been more of myself. Like I feel like I, I found myself in Philly or maybe refound a part of myself that I kind of like lost and kind of had to like wasn't really able to express the way that I wanted to in Vegas just because like it's not much of a scene in Vegas and kind of just like the ideal scene that I always dreamed of was just happening in Philly so easily and nonchalant you know it's just like yeah we have shows in our basements and I'm like we don't even have basements in Vegas <laughs> So you mentioned music, um, and you've been able to accomplish a lot in your relatively young age. And what inspired you to share your music with the world, and what has it been like over the last couple of years? One of the main reasons why I like to share my art and music with the world is because, you know, I don't really see a lot of what I'm putting out, you know, like, the whole saying, be the change you want to see in the world. And yeah, it, it just wasn't that much representation. So I kind of had to like take it upon myself to be that representation and hopefully be that for, you know, the next generation. Um, and really kind of like, you know, show people that, you know, you don't have to be boxed in even when you live in a world where they want to box you in. What has been the response from people, some people call them fans, some people call them stands. Stands. Because <laughs> um, you mentioned representation and we don't necessarily have black queer representation in popular media. Mm -hmm. So what has been the feedback from other black young queer folks when they've um, discovered you or have been following your music? I don't know. I'm sure it's more. Unfortunately, within, you know, kind of like guitar-based music and even pop music, um, it's not really consumed by, you know, the urban folk, as, you know, they say. Um, and so I kind of like what makes what I do extra special is the fact that when I do see other, like, you know, queer kids of color and audience, um, I almost kind of feel bad that, like, what I do, they're still the minority, you know, even though they're watching someone that looks like them mm -hmm. up on stage. And I think it's just extra special that even still when they're like a minority in the crowd, they still have this like person of representation on stage, like entertaining everyone in the crowd. And it's like, oh, I can do this even if I don't necessarily have like the, I guess, community that most people are granted, you know, especially within music, you know, like a lot of people have the representation and have people that like look like them and like gone through their experiences to like lift them up where it's like, I didn't, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, there was like no one around me and like my community or even my team when I first started, you know, and I had to like navigate my own way. Do you think it's because it's guitar based? music or it's because the subject matters tend to be really different from what is on pop radio, which is usually love songs, which I don't, I love love, I don't mind them. But like even with your song Straight Boy, you talk about co-opting and erasure. Um, and that's not something we typically hear on a dance track. It's rare that, you know, you get guitar based stuff that like touches on like, you know, 
queer identity and, and queer issues and queer problems and also like you know black issues too you know I have a song you know called I Can't Breathe most guitar based genres you know is overtaken by straight white men so obviously they're not going to write songs about that and have they've taken over dance that's too like, that's probably the main problem just in general with kind of just getting the more alternative stuff that's being done by people of color and queer people of color it's just the fact that like it's a genre that is typically consumed by straight white men and they feel they can't relate to it for some reason even though the reverse is that like I grew up liking the stuff that mostly straight white men would write and I still relate to it in some way so why can't it be reversed mm -hmm. you know and it really makes you wonder why but I think we all know why so you've been really open um, about your bipolar disorder diagnosis and that helps to combat stigma because mm -hmm. um, I think only now we're having expanded conversations around mental health that isn't stigma based um, what led you to be to share that part of yourself with the world? I think the biggest thing that inspired me is the fact when I got my diagnosis after like a really like bad traumatic situation. You know, a lot of the people around me, like in my team at that point in time were kind of like one of the main things like before it was even like, oh is Shamir okay, like blah 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 was like how can we cover this up? Like, we won't tell anybody, like, blah, 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 blah. And I thought that was, like, so ridiculous and so... It, it basically kind of just, like, opened my eyes to, like, kind of, like, why when a lot of artists kind of, like, go off the deep end, it seems out of nowhere, but it's never out of nowhere, you know? There's always kind of, like, science and everything and I think if more artists was more open about their mental health issues um, the people that you know follow their art and like like them you know would probably be able to like give them information and like help where they can from as best as they can you know like I think after I became really open about my diagnosis, I started to learn a lot more stuff about mental health and about bipolar disorder and how to manage it, literally from my fans, you know, like who also deal with it. And, um, and I've had so many people like, uh, you know, reach out and be like, oh, I have bipolar. And like, to see you be so open about it has been like so helpful for me and everything, so. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I really like to take, like, negative situations and, like, find the positives in them. And I don't think negative situations are just, like, bad things that happen that we have to, like, get past or, like, forget. Like, there's always a lesson or a story or something within them, you know. What would be one bit of advice or one thing you would share with your younger self? So think about Shamir at age 13. What is one bit of advice or something you would tell 13-year-old Shamir? Um, I would tell 13-year-old Shamir that you're not a boy, so chill. <laughs> <laughs> at least not a boy by the world's standards. You know, I felt like I... Because, you know, I've always had, like, a very high-pitched voice and softer features and everything. And um, would even, and it will frustrate me because I would, like, really try to butch it up as much as I possibly can and, like, still, you know, get called she or, like, the opposite sex and, like, everything. And, and it was before I even, for most people, had a real understanding of, like, what non-binary meant. And... Um, and I, even still to this day, I think it's kind of like something that I still struggle with, but acknowledge in the sense that it's just like, you know, even though I'm, you know, someone who's assigned male at birth, I always just kind of had like a, a, a slight disconnect with every single one of my male friends, like every single one, you know, like, it's like, I've never treated the same way as they treat their other male friends. I hate it when they yeah. broke the, the class up into boys on one side, yeah. girls on the other, or when we would go to church and they would have the, you know, the young boys group. I hate it because I did not, 
I didn't have the language to say why I felt uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but those spaces never made me feel safe. Mm -hmm. And well, the weird thing about my middle school too is that at lunch they separated the boys and girls. But, you know, I was always such an androgynous kid that even if I sat on the girl's side, like, no one would, like, call me out. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you for being on Kiki's with Louie. Thank you. And I want to give a toast to your success and all of the brilliance you share with the world. Thank you. And this is also the success of all other LGBT people in the world. Thank We're you. We're rooting for you. We're rooting for you. Uh, you know, rooting for everybody black, LGBT, and Ariana Grande. Well, this is cute. Louie. Oh, hey. Well, I want to thank you for watching Kiki's with me, Louie. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And I want to hear your thoughts and experiences on this topic. So drop a comment. Let's keep the Kiki's going.